Buying a graphics card sucks right now. And we're talking about another one, but one that you might actually be able to buy thanks to AMD. And if you can find it in the wild, should you buy it? What's up guys, my name is Juan and you're watching my channel on Blueprint PC. So welcome and thank you for tuning in for one. We're talking about everybody's favorite topic in early 2021. That's graphics cards and how much it sucks to buy them. But actually today we're talking about one that might actually be available in the somewhat near future. We're talking about the RX 6700 XT from AMD. Now AMD openly states that there's gonna be more of these available than the entire 6000 series launch so far and that they're actually gonna slow roll and trickle these out over time instead of just dumping everything they got onto the market and then, you know, scalpers get them and then everybody's just SOL. So today, we're talking about the one that I was able to pick up. I went to my local micro center and if you have one nearby, this is probably one of your best routes to buy a graphics card that's not completely overpriced. And you're gonna have to do what I did, get up early, get there before open, wait in line with everybody else out the front door and then hope that by the time you use the counter, there's something available. And at least for my local one, they seem to be doing pretty well and had stuff available. So I was able to pick up ASRock's entry-level variant, the Challenger D Gaming. Now, this is a slight tick over the reference design and we're gonna talk about what makes this what it is and why it's special or not and talk about some pros and cons and all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and let's open up and start talking about it. Well guys, we're not gonna do an unboxing in this video. Reason being, there's really not a lot to unbox. It's an instruction manual and some foam and the graphics card itself. So, there she is. The ASRock RX 6700 XT Challenger D Gaming. Now, we're gonna do a deep dive, go through all the specs for this, so that way you guys know what you're buying in case you have any questions. Hopefully that'll help you out through it. And in the end of, it, in the, end of the video, I'm gonna walk you through my perspective as to why I think it's actually a decent purchase. Again, if you can find it near MSRP, even if there's other cards available. So let's go ahead, let's go through the rundown, and then we'll talk about a few things. The ASRock Challenger has a base clock of 2,321 megahertz. Boost clock is 2,581 megahertz with a game clock of 2,424 megahertz. VRAM is handled by 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. Memory has a 192 bit interface bus with a bandwidth of 384 gigabytes per second. The GPU die itself consists of 40 compute units, which equates to 2560 stream processors and 40 ray accelerators. This is all pushed through PCIe Express Gen 4. The cooler has a dual fan layout with three copper heat pipes and an aluminum heat sink. Software to do all your adjustments and overclocking is handled through AMD's Radeon and ASRock Tweak 2.0, whichever you prefer. Output, you get one HDMI 2.1, three DisplayPort 1.4s. The dimensions are 10.59 inches long, 5.28 inches tall, and it takes up two slots for thickness. For power and thermals, the card will go up to 110C before it starts to downclock and really shut itself off for safety. It is rated at 230 watts, and remember that's prior to any overclocking. The recommended PSU by AMD is 650 watts and it uses two 8-pin connectors. When it comes to style and design, guys, there's nothing special going on here. It's a dual fan layout that we've all seen plenty of times before. It is a little retro in my opinion based on the fact that the copper heat pipes are bulging out the side there. It's something we used to see a few generations ago. There's not a single drop of RGB. All you're getting color-wise on this is just some different textured plastics. Alrighty, guys, so I'm going to try to wrap this up as fast as I possibly can, which is probably going to be very long, so I do apologize in advance. Um, we're going to do some quick pros and cons, and then I'm going to talk about why I still think this is a decent buy for this card at or near MSRP. I don't recommend anybody buying from a scalper or overpaying for any reason whatsoever. Um, I do have some videos coming up that'll help you have some temporary GPU options or some budget-friendly options here. This guy right here, quick pros. One, it's an upgraded design over the reference design cooler, so you should have better performance and better thermals and things of that nature. Um, all the 6700 XT in general have ray tracing. I do look at that as a bonus because, you know, AMD could go the NVIDIA route and as they start ticking down the, the stack, you know, they could take ray tracing away from some cards and they may do that if there's a 6600 or 6500 XT. We don't know. So this having it is still a plus, at least in my book. Quick cons. Well, pricing is a little tricky because it's more expensive than a 3060 Ti and the 3068 Ti is competitive. It's cheaper than a 3070, but not by much. But performance kind of sits in a weird spot. It still does better than the 3060 in a lot of ways and does almost as good as the 3070 in a lot of ways. 
and it kind of fits in a weird little wedge right in there and it's just kind of a, a weird experience and everybody's saying you know we'll buy the 3060 ti it's it's you know it's just as good or close enough for the pricing for a bigger discount price well good luck finding one and you know that that's to each their own and the 3060 pricing too guys remember msrp was dictated before the tariffs so what we knew at msrp before is gonna come up now regardless the default pricing of 400 bucks is gonna be increased the other con that i have for this one is actually ray tracing this is equivalent to nvidia's first generation try at ray tracing and well we all know with that there's a big performance hit when you do use it so my suggestion for that would be to use ray tracing when you're playing pretty games you want to play single player or maybe just like a co-op type thing if you're doing anything competitive just turn it off and run normal routes from there don't try to you know get super crazy fps with ray tracing on at least this card maybe 1080p get better results but i also will do a benchmark video coming up here in the near future for this guy with some overclocking as well so we'll take a look at that rounding all this out um the perspective i want you guys to understand this one is i'm trying to bring a little bit of light in the darkness and i know everybody's just super angry and frustrated with gpus right now and if you can find this at or near msrp i do think it's a good buy even with maybe some other options in play depending on what the other options are mind you if you go back to previous generation 5700 xt 2080 2080 super things like that this outperforms all those this is i'd say five percent better than a 2080 super overall and it has ray tracing so if you guys are out shopping about and you see a 2080 super you think wow that's a really good card and it's eight hundred dollars or more especially right now now it's probably twelve hundred dollars but the msrp on a 2080 super was 700 bucks if you can buy a 2080 super or equivalent class of card for 560 bucks would you not likely jump on that the other thing that people compare it to is the 5700 xt and they're you know which is this is accurate this is true you get about a 20 percent performance boost for 20 percent cost boost which is no fun to everybody it's a lateral move yes it's more performance at more cost the counter to that really is again when you look at the class of card you're getting it's a 2080 super type classic card for 560 bucks at least what i paid ideally 479 if you can find an msrp but you're also getting ray tracing and the whole suite of other offerings that AMD has and the ones to come, like their DLSS variant that they're going to come out with. That's going to come to this as well, too. So you're going to get more performance than that initial 20% as well when using that, when it comes out. Yes, it's not there right out of the box, but it's coming. Um, the other thing to consider, too, is compared to the 5700 XT, the drivers for these work right off the bat. You can actually plug it in and use it and your game's not going to crash 17 times only like 14 but you know these are more refined so you're getting a better product overall straight out of the box compared to the 5700 xt so that's my personal two cents on it guys let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you have any questions comments or just other perspectives on it from yourself i'd be happy to read them outside of that please hit that like subscribe button and i will catch you in the next one